Welcome to Abiding Life Studios. I'm Noah Wells. Today I have with me Shay Wells. Hi. Hello. And we also have Steve Reinhardt. Hi, it's great to be with you guys. Nice to see you, Shay and Noah. And, and a big happy birthday. Today's Ooh, this is 2020. You. Big happy birthday to you, Noah. Thank you. I'm 41 now. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I'm getting old. Old man. You yeah. are getting old. I'm still kicking though. Woohoo. I'm glad to hear that. So today we're going to talk about um, something I learned in uh, 2018 um, when I was in Kansas. And it's sea glass is what I learned about. And I was, um, I was walking, I think it was a, was it a, was it the sea? Or I think it was just a, a river yeah, or something. Yeah. I don't know. But it was, yeah, it was in Kansas. So I was uh, walking along there with my uncle Pitts and he, was, he always liked looking for fossils. So we were looking for fossils. We were going through, looking, picking them up and then we'd run over to him and show him and say, is this a good fossil? And, you know, he'd tell us if it was good or not. And I looked down and saw something, you know, not really shiny. I just saw something that was weird looking. So I, I grabbed it and it was a piece of sea glass and I was so like mesmerized by it because I was touching it and I was like, why? There's no sharp edges on it. How weird is this? And I, so I went over to him and said, hey, what's this? And he's like, hey, that's uh, sea glass where it goes in sharp into the water like someone broke a bottle or something. And it gets super, you know, super sharp when it goes in there and then it gets beat up, you know, in the water, it gets sloshed around, hit across rocks and on the sand and everything and smooths out the, the edges. And after he said that, you know, God spoke to me and said, this is who you are. This is your life. And it really spoke to me because it showed me that before, before I was a believer and even during being a believer is I had so many sharp edges on me and he you know, he doesn't just, you know, he doesn't just soft them out just instantly. I had to be tossed around in the water and, and slammed up against things and then, you know, hit, basically sandblasted to get uh, smooth. And I don't know, it just really spoke to me. And I, I've sent it out to a couple guys. I'll, I'll probably keep, continue sending it out to more people. Um, giving everybody a piece of sea glass, but it, 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 I keep it in my pocket now. And I, I don't know, it's always a nice reminder for me to, when I put my hand in my pocket, I always think this is me. And, and the piece I have now has a sharp edge on it. I dropped it and it broke. And it just, you know, really remind me of myself is there's still sharp edges on me. God is still always working on me. And I don't know, I really, it just really spoke to me and how special he spends the time on each and every one of us on. And that's, that's how I look at it as a glass is each glass is different. Um, some is sharp, some's not, some has one little smooth edge, but it's okay. Cause God's there. God's working on you and God's always involved with you. So that's what I learned. Do you guys have any, yeah, I'm well, glad you explained that because look what I got in the mail. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So it fits perfectly in my hand uh, and uh, I like hanging on to it. And, uh, and I did get an explanation, but I, I liked uh, what you shared there. Um, and I think there's a couple, couple things that maybe we could talk about it and uh, that are important. You, one of the things you said is that you know god's a part of our life but he doesn't bring about change instantly i was talking with some guys here at my house last night and and you know like one of uh one of my friends who's older than me i said you know like why doesn't he do it like he could like he could snap mm -hmm. his fingers and instantly bring about whatever's going to happen at the end of my life why does it have to take a lifetime yeah uh, you got any thoughts on that I, my thought on that is he takes the time and I think he uses things in our life as long as it's bringing us to him. 
And I know like, at least in my life, people probably have seen things in my life that thought, why, why, it wasn't, why won't God just take that away right now? It's been 15 years, it's been 20 years, why is it still there? And for me, it's there because I still go to God with it every time it pops into my head. So I feel like God just leaves it there if it's for our good. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? I, I I like that. I think he does these. I think everything's works for our good. You're I think you're right on target. But but like that doesn't really answer. That's like part of the answer to my question is like, uh, you know, like what's the um, why? Like why is why does it take time? I mean, well, I think one of the things is, is he doesn't go off of time, and we do. We're the ones who constantly focus on. Oh, I've been dealing with this thing for a year now. Oh, I've been dealing with two years, now 15 years, now 20. I'm 75 years old and I'm still dealing with it. And I just don't, I, I don't believe he goes off of time. I think he just goes off of individually who we are and what we need. And that's what I think is so, what's so special about walking with him is each of us, just like the glass, each of us are different shaped, different sharpness. Um, I think our relationship with him is so unique and different. Like my relationship with him is different than Shay's is because we both need something different. We both need something to stay in and stay in our lives. And sometimes those sharp edges stay in there for a long time. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I was thinking you used the word relationship, um, and uh, I was thinking my my aunt and uncle were having a celebration for them here in a week. Uh, they're celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary. Wow! And, and you know, they fight like cats and dogs right now, <laughs> and and they don't really like each other from time to time a lot. Mm. Uh, and uh, he goes golfing. He's he's in his 90s, and he goes golfing three times a week. And his wife's the happiest when he's gone. Uh, so, so you would think, um, you know, I, and I'm thinking in terms of a relationship that, you know, 70 years ago when they got married, uh, and then 20 years after that or 30 years after that, uh, I don't know if they were saying to themselves what we say as Christians is like, why is it taking so long? Right. You know, like what's, and I guess that would be probably what I would be. Uh, you know, thinking in terms of my friend's question last night of, is like a, in a relationship, like, I'm not sure there's a hurry or I'm not sure there's right. an end goal mm -hmm. uh, other than to know that I'm in relationship. And that's what I like about this is, um, so I got a question, um, you know, it, it could be a little depressing if I was thinking of myself, oh, I'm just a piece of glass and mm. God's just toying with me. And, you know, he's, he's chipping away at me where he wants to, but I'm just a piece of glass and uh, he's messing with me. Is that, was that what you were like trying to get out, get across? That no, I, I definitely wasn't trying to say that. Okay. <laughs> Even though I, maybe I felt like that in my life before with him, but I definitely wasn't saying that in this. It's, you know, and I was going to mention this too. It's like, you know, my piece of glass is this size. I think this is where we, where we really screw ourselves is when we start comparing each other's glass or each other because my, mine's better than yours. Well, yours is bigger. It's blue too. <laughs> exactly. And you know, I think it's really, I think it's just a really cool thing to look at that he is, so personable and just so just like i said it's just such a unique relationship to both to all of us mm -hmm. and i think if i start comparing my sharpness and like like your friend saying it should be done already well where is he getting that from who's telling him it should be done already is he telling himself did someone else say it or like if shay and i went through the same thing and she's already over it well i should be over it now why am I still dealing with this? And I think that's what I'm saying. Like, we really can screw ourselves when we start comparing when we should be over something. 
because I have stuff in my life that I don't see it going away anytime soon, but I'm a lot more okay with it than I used to be because I stopped comparing myself with other people that go up in front of the church or go up and tell me, oh, I, it only took me five years to get over this. I'm good. Well, God, why is it taking me 20 years? And I still don't feel like I'm over it. And I think that's where you can really start beating yourself up or going into depression when you start looking at someone else, wondering why they, why, why, why would God take that away and not mine? Well, because God's still using it in your life. Like, yeah. I was just all, talking to Shay today, like, I was, I started cutting myself probably when I was 12. And I didn't stop till I was 19. Then I was just done with it. I don't know why. God just said we're done. So I was done with it. Good. I was worried you were going to say like 39. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Four, 40 and a half. Yeah. But I, it, it could very easily have been. If, if that's what he needed to have in my life to keep going, to bring me to him, I guarantee I'd still be dealing with it. So, so really what you're saying by sending us this glass, and I wanted to say thank you for it. I really like it. And I like the, the message because you're really saying that um, it's more about the process mm -hmm. uh, than the final outcome. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, yes, it is. And, and it's more about the relationship than um, whether we get over something or, or get anything at all. It's about the relationship. Is that right? Yeah, it is right now. And I'd be absolutely shocked if I still didn't have sharp edges on me when I die. Yeah. And you, and I'd only be, I'd also be shocked if you were the only one that noticed them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't want to interview this one over here too much. She'll tell you all my sharp edges. Does he have sharp edges, Shay? Um, a few. <laughs> That's my nice way of saying it. <laughs> Yeah, it's my birthday. She's got to be nice. True. Oh, yeah. But I was going to say, like, with a lot of, like, with Noah and with my own struggles and then with your friend of, like, saying, why isn't it done with? Because, like, with Noah's, like, health issues, so many people have prayed that he could eat healthy food and that God would take that away. And then it's been years and years. And then when you hear from so many people, like, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you, then it gets you thinking, like, why isn't God healing this? Why isn't mm -hmm. he taking it away? But I think it's because we look at our life as like, it's everything to us, but in reality, it's a small blip in eternity, but we all look at our life as so important. And this is our one life and this is our only chance, but we don't think about what the impact is of our life on our, on eternity. And also like the ripple effect of like, I think back to Ainsley's anxiety. It feels cause she still goes through it. Like we've been going through it forever and God's not taking it. And we don't know why she still has it, mm -hmm. why she still struggles and she's nine and she doesn't sleep through the night. And, and you know, it's like all of this stuff, but we also have to think of how many parents that we have now helped. And how many people with young kids of anxiety that they have helped that we have to go through it. And then it's this ripple effect that God needs us to go through it for an amount of time to reach these other people. But we all think of it in such a selfish, but it's my life and I don't want to struggle. Instead of looking at the impact of eternity of the ripple effect. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. makes sense to me. So it's hard to think of like, why isn't this over with? Well, we need to be refined and go through this tumbling through the ocean floor of not fun mm -hmm. stuff, but it's because we have to be refined in order for the impact of beyond our life is the way I see it. Mm. But maybe it's just because I'm a glass half full kind of person. <laughs> Yeah, so you're half full, I'm always half empty. Always half empty, and I'm always, yep. I'm always the glass half full kind of person. Not always, 
I always like to think that stuff is going to go wrong. So when it goes great, I'm so happy. Yeah. Then when it goes wrong, I'm like, yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> you guys are fun. <laughs> Polar opposites in a lot of different things. Yeah. That, that's great. That's really cool. Well, I, I really like the way you're both saying. I, th I think it's so cool to see the distinctions that we all have with one another. Um, and, and to know that we're always in relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he, and I think that was, you know, another thing is like, if he's in, in a sense, if he has me in his hand, mm -hmm. uh, like this. Yeah, exactly. You know, that this is such a comfortable spot for me to be mm -hmm. uh, where I can rest there. Uh, I don't, I'm not doing actually anything to myself. I think that's another great thing about the illustration is uh, this glass didn't do anything to become like this. Mm -mm. You know, it didn't make itself. It didn't mm -hmm. turn itself blue. It wasn't thinking, oh my gosh, I got this sharp edge that really bugs me mm -hmm. and I need to knock that off. Or I like this, I want to have this shape like, uh, you know, kind of like an arrow, a scraper, an old Indian scraper. Because Steve will really like that shape. Yeah. Uh, it didn't think anything about that. Mm -hmm. it, didn't, it didn't do anything to make itself this color, this shape, this texture, mm -hmm. anything uh, other than just be itself. And yeah. I really like that part of the illustration of, of the sea glass because uh, I can do that. I can, I can do that much of nothing for yeah. me. Oh you know, yeah, I can rest in the Father's hand, and I can know uh, that I'm safe. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that I'm, you know, that I'm really comfortable and safe there, without having to do anything to myself or be my own shepherd or be my own, mm -hmm. uh, you know, be my own uh, gardener uh, to make yeah. myself grow. I I don't, I don't have to do any of that. I can mm -hmm. just rest in Him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that's what I like it so much. And that's why I keep it in my pocket because I still, I'm still going to have bad days. I'm still going to have real bad struggles. And then I put my hands in my pocket to grab my keys or something. And I feel that. And it's, for me, it's a nice reminder that he's got me uh, and he's still working on it. He's still, you know, we're still in our relationship, moving forward on stuff, even though sometimes you feel like you're stuck. But. Uh, uh, yeah, and I just, yeah, I just, I just like that he is always working on me. And, you know, I was thinking like, you know, and the one I have right now has a big chip, you know, and to me, sometimes I get big chips. Like when my dad died, I had a big chip. And you're like, oh man, this is, this is going to be rough. And then he starts working on it and working on it. And I've learned so much just with him passing away. And yeah, because sometimes we tell ourselves, mm, I can't live without that piece of me. Yes, exactly. I can't, I can't do it. I can't exist. I can't make it without that piece of me. And then, like you said, a big chunk's missing. Mm -hmm. And what happens? Yeah, and what happens is he starts smoothing that edge out and starts filling it up. And... I've learned so I I can go through my life one of these times I'll do my testimony for people and it's I've I've gone through so much in life where he has showed me himself so many times and I've been cracked I've been chipped I've been shattered and he just brings me together and smooths me out and I learned so much through it is it fun to go through no most of the time it's pretty hard to go through things in life but when you finally come out of it, oh man, it's a sweet feeling. Even if I've had sweet feelings, even when I'm in the middle of it, he'll give me a little bit of peace and it's, it's worth it. And like Shay said, it's worth it just to, even if I just get the opportunity of talking to one person and helping them, you know, walk with Christ and, you know, keep that relationship open with Christ. It's so worth it to me. I'll go through stuff for 50 years just to help one person if that's what needs to happen. I just vote that you're crazy right there, but 
<laughs> I, I most likely am. Okay. You know, I, I, one of the things, and I don't know, I might have told this story before. Uh, one of the, one of the, um, and I like that about you guys, and that, that's your job description, you know, for you, that you will go through all sorts of hell uh, mm -hmm. with people. Yeah. Uh, not you do it yourself, but you also walk right into the gates of hell mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, almost fearlessly with people. And uh, that's so exciting. And your dad used to do that. And one of this, uh, the glass reminds me of what he used to tell. Is it okay if I share? Uh, yeah. And it's a little bit, it, you know, it kind of could come across the wrong way, but it's the same kind of thing. And his, as his, and his said, uh, you know, his, uh, he told me one time, because my job is not to change you. And my job is not to help you. My job is not to, you know, help you trust the Lord any better or abide better. He goes, um, my job is, like, you're going through uh, mm, uh, a factory. I'll say a factory that's making you into uh, someone who's just, just exactly fit to live in heaven. And mm -hmm. it's painful sometimes. It's fun sometimes. But you're going through it, and you're molded, and you're like this glass was sand. And it was all gathered up, and it was sifted in the big sand got thrown out of the small stuff there. And then it was heated up and it was melted and it was like molten. Um, I just got a message that said my speaker's not working. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, hopefully it's working. Uh, anyway, so it's, it was molten and then it was, uh, you know, rolled out and it was pressed under some huge heavy rollers to get it to this thickness. Uh, and so it's gone through a whole big, huge process to become this piece of glass. Mm. And he goes, and so your dad said, my job is to tell you when you're going through the roller, you're red hot molten, don't jump off the, don't jump off the conveyor belt. Mm. Don't jump out of the process, don't jump off the yeah. machine. Stay in, stay in the machine, stay in the process because God's making you a perfectly fit person to be in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's and that's what probably takes so long, and yeah. so that's what I like about the glass you sent out is it's like uh, we we're in this process, and we're in it together, which is even better, um, and we're we're all going through that process together, and so I would just like I just love that uh, story and il an illustration for me to mm -hmm. stick with it because yeah. like you said sometimes it's it's you know it's frustrating and it's difficult and. And I get angry because it's like, why? Like my friend, this should have, how, why should it take 70 years to like be fit for heaven? Well, I, I don't actually have the answer to that question, but yeah. I'm going to stick with the process and not bail out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just going to say that in the, in the write-up that you sent out, <clears throat> one of the things that it says is you're becoming refined and smooth but not unmarked and so i love that these pieces of glass too mm -hmm. even as they're smoothing out they still have scratches and they mm -hmm. still have marks and they it doesn't mean like once your situation has smoothed out once god has has i don't know healed you from something or taken something or whatever wording you want to use mm -hmm. but when that struggle has smoothed out you're still not unmarked mm -hmm. and so i just love that that sometimes i think we are going to stay in the rollers we're going to stay under the pressure we're going to get through it and then we're going to be fine but really we're not unmarked from it mm -hmm. so i've just been just reading that has been you know interesting to me of it's not like you're gonna come out of it shiny and smooth and like a diamond without any marks on it mm -hmm. you're still going to although smooth and refined be marked yeah yeah the only the only flawless diamonds are the artificial ones mm -hmm. you know then all natural diamonds all authentic ones have some and they might be really hard to see but they all have flaws mm -hmm. yeah. they all reflect the light not perfectly yeah uh, but the artificial ones do it perfectly mm -hmm. uh, which, which could be like 
kind of part of our problem when we compare ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and we, yeah. and we, that's another podcast we can have for the future of like comparing ourselves mm -hmm. and then having, um, having to pretend that we have no flaws. Uh, instead of what, like you were saying, Shay, um, we have marks. We're not unmarked. Thank God we're not unmarked. Uh, and that, and maybe uh, those marks, instead of uh, erasing our flaws, magnify them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, I, I kind of like that because I have so many uh, that I'm beginning to get to the point where I actually enjoy them uh, yeah. and, and embrace them instead of try and fix them and cover them up. Yeah, and I, I want people to see my marked up body. You know, I want them to see it mm -hmm. and that know, perfect. yeah, I'm not perfect. And, you know, you want to come and talk to me? Come and talk to me because I'm marked up. And I'm, I'm not better than anybody else. You know, we're all the same in this. We're all, we're all going through different struggles, different trials. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I do like, I like that. Yeah, and you're so genuine and authentic. Uh, that's really beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it, I really, I know it's probably sick and twisted, but I really do feel find joy into talking to people that are are willing to show me their struggles mm -hmm. and their marks and then I can show them mine really easy and then we can all relate and and know that God's got this I think it's a I mean I really think that's how God wants us to be with each other I don't think he'd want us to act like I got it all together and not marked. I'd rather show you guys I'm all marked up. I'd rather show all the strangers that I'm marked. And yeah, yeah, God's like walking that. with me in that. I like that too. And, and just to uh, kind of reiterate on one of our earlier conversations, uh, I would miss out. I would feel like I would be missing out on something God has for me. Mm. If, if you kid that part of yourself yeah i would miss out on you actually and i'd actually miss out on christ in you because it's in those the flaws and in those marks uh, that we get to see jesus that mm -hmm. i get to see him in you and, yeah. and not just see him but experience him and mm -hmm. sense his presence in you through the flaws actually and the marks and the scars mm -hmm. uh, and the scabs and and where the blood's oozing out and I get to see the blood of Christ actually ooze out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, quite a, an amazing experience for me. Yeah. And I mean, that is. So I'm hoping you never perfect. turn out to be that shiny, polished piece of glass that doesn't have any rough edges or uh, all the things that you would like to make you about yourself. I hope that never happens. Honestly, I really do hope that never happens. Uh, it would be a sad day for me, uh, the day you're perfect and don't have any flaws yeah the day that if it ever happens i will be praying to god that he shatters me <laughs> <laughs> i do I'm not sure, want that i'm sure i will find a hammer and come after you myself yes thank you <laughs> well yeah and shay just said it perfectly like what did you say what did you say i said success suit glass because we all have this success suit that we feel like we have to put our best foot forward and we have to be perfect and we have to have all of our things together and our behavior has to match the way that we feel that everyone else wants to see us. And that's such a fake, not real, but that's how we want people to see us. Where in reality, there's so much comfort in knowing that we're all broken there's mm -hmm. comfort in knowing that we're all marked that we're not all smooth that we all have problems there's so much comfort in that that i wish more people like you were saying would show that and come to the table with that because there's something about being genuine and real and raw that really gives you that space to see god where if we're always trying to hide hide God in a success suit, you know, you really can't 
there's no real and authenticity in that of trying to just be perfect and in yeah. that success suit glass, the fake diamond. Yeah. <laughs> But if you want to try it, I would suggest you try it. Go ahead. Yeah. Go, 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 go to the max, though. Don't mess around. Yeah. Uh, like, really put your all into it. To our listeners, if you want to, like, I've given up on it. But I think it's a great strategy because <laughs> I tried for so long and I tried so hard. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's important that we do uh, try to actually do that and live that success suit. Um, but don't don't monkey around with it in uh, mm, I think because once we get to the point of it, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. It's exhausting, and it and it produces so much. We were talking about anxiety. It produces lots of anxiety because there's never enough. Yeah. And then it's like, oh my gosh, if there's not enough, people are going to reject me, and God's going to reject me, and uh, and so there's so, but there is so much freedom in being able to be just an ordinary piece of glass. Mm -hmm and have have been be in god's hands and yeah and know that god's walking with you just being a regular yeah. piece of glass yeah he's holding on to me in fact yeah exactly he, he's got a hold of me so another good can i share like we're, we're running out of time but one quick story yeah this is another one that might have been an arthur burt story but this is one your dad told me at one of our men's retreats and he was talking about, oh my gosh, look at that piece of glass. It's standing up. It's so great. Oh no, it fell over. <laughs> right? Yeah. Is that a problem? And, and when we fall, uh, is that a, you know, we judge each other. And it's so much fun to look down on each other. It's like, oh my gosh, that guy fell. Mm -hmm. He look at what kind of Christian he is. He yeah. fell over. He's struggle. He's you know like he struggles with his relationship with his wife and his kids aren't perfect uh the great thing about falling over though is i fall over right into the hand of god mm. yeah. uh, when i fall uh when i stand i'm standing i'm standing because of him uh that glass can't do that i'm holding it up mm -hmm. and when i fall i fall into his hand and I'm never, and I never leave that. And I think I, that's another thing I like about this gift that you've given us uh, to think about and to experience is that mm, whether I stand or fall, uh, mm -hmm. I'm the Lord's and I'm, I'm always in constant touch and contact with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's not, he doesn't let me go. He doesn't treat me like uh, an, just a, an object. He's, he does have, a relationship with me and uh, mm -hmm. and probably if it's you know if we ran it to an extreme it'd probably break down but but you know, it'd be more like having a finger you know and it's his finger if it's if mm -hmm. it stands up if it's it's if, if it falls down it's his it's still hooked to him yeah uh, anyway i i like that story um uh, about standing and falling because when we stand we do actually judge one another from time to time Mm -hmm. uh, some of us enjoy it some like shay uh, <laughs> and me uh, but that's also kind of one of the ways that we can kind of admit we fall yeah you know? mm -hmm. and we don't have to hide it we don't have to pretend uh, you know that sometimes it's fun to criticize people oh my gosh uh, and then we can bring it out into the light and we can go oh my gosh i'm still in his hand yeah, and I can admit it. I don't even have to pretend that that's not something I do. So yeah. anyway, I'm sorry I kind of went off on that. But no, I thought it was good. I think I think like we've talked about before, it's it's how you look at things. Like you're saying, if you if it drops down into his hand, we feel like we've fallen, but really, it's really how you look at it. It's in his hand, so yeah you know actually I think, we, I think we beat up ourselves that we've fallen but really he's just no yeah you know, we're actually we've actually got more of us touching him yeah experiencing exactly. him and when we do fall yeah compared to if we just have one little tiny point touching mm -hmm. i mean we're still in touch it doesn't what difference does it make but right yeah when, we, when we fall like I'm, I'm i'm i know he's got me yeah so 
anyway, yeah, I like Thank the you. thought. I like the thought of him having me more than me thinking I'm standing up on my own, even though I I do that a lot. I think I'm the one who's in control of, you know, I'm doing I'm doing a great job for him. But then it drop, then I drop, and I like dropping. I like dropping into him. Mm -hmm. Because he's there to catch me, which is so beautiful that he does that for us. Yeah, yeah, and maybe the maybe that'd be wise to just not get up and just lay there and enjoy mm -hmm. his mm, presence. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and and really rest in him. Yeah. Well, thanks guys for letting me share that story with you. Thanks for the nice gift and sharing it. That's really wonderful. I'm glad to be in a process with you, Shay, and Noah, and uh, not jump off or or jump out of the Lord's hand. If, if that, I don't think that's possible, but it's nice to be walking in the process with each of you. Yeah, and, and I appreciate you guys because you show you show me your marks all the time and makes me feel right at home. <laughs> Even though you're both probably judging me. Well, we do like it. So. <laughs> you know, there's different ways to judge. They're both equally uh, uh, death giving. One is, wow, that Noah is such a wonderful guy. <laughs> that's a judgment too, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, and uh, both, both the good judgment and the bad judgment are still eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the good. It's funny, but we would think that that would that wouldn't be too um, not healthy. But I found it for me is it's just as unhealthy to have good judgment uh, yeah. as it is to have bad judgment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, Noah. Thank you, Shay. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Uh, thank you, listeners. And if anybody wants me to send one out to you, the write up, and because uh, I got scripture that goes along with it. Um, just email me at noahwells7 at gmail.com and I will send you one with a piece of sea glass. All right. Thank you so much for listening and we'll do another one soon. All right. See you guys. Love you. Love you. Love you.